Konnichiwa, Japan fans. Today's show, we're going to be talking about non-clients. So let's get going. This is the seventh year of the Sales Japan Series podcast, broadcasting around the world from the Beverly Hills of Japan, Minato-ku here in downtown Tokyo. It is chic central. I'm your host, Dr. Greg Story, Dale Kani, Tokyo franchise owner, the president of Dale Kani Tokyo Training, and the three-time best-selling author of Japan Sales Mastery, which is Zaegyo in Japanese, Japan Business Mastery, and Japan Presentations Mastery, plus Stop Wasting Money on Training in Japanese, Training De, Okane O, Muruni Sunu Wa, Yami Masho, and all are available on Amazon. In this podcast, I want to help you to survive and, even better, thrive in business. One, sell more and do it more easily. Two, exceed your targets. In fact, blow up your targets. Three, make some serious, serious money. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast with your family, friends, and colleagues. We are not being sponsored by Libsyn, but we value your privacy, which is why we have our podcast hosted by Libsyn. Unlike many other hosting organizations, Libsyn have a strict policy that does not allow access to your private information by anyone. Here is our daily podcast lineup on Apple Podcasts. Mondays, the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show podcast. Tuesday, the Presentations Japan series, and every second Tuesday, the Business Tatsujin no Oshie Show. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan series, and every second Thursday, the Business Pro Podcast Show. Fridays, the Japan Business Mastery Show podcast. Saturdays, Japan's top business interviews. Now, this is episode number 354, and today we're talking about recognizing non-clients. Salespeople are always desperate to make a sale. There are targets, quotas, KPIs of plenty, and the pressure is unrelenting. When you're in a downturn, a recession, a pandemic, etc., which are driving down sales, the desperation becomes even more intense. Getting meetings at all is considered a win, and we go for it, regardless of whether the buyer is qualified or not. Telling your sales manager you are seeing a potential buyer feels a lot better than telling them you are seeing no one, and a 5% chance of a deal is more attractive than a 0% chance. Self-delusion is like a balm in tough times. Desperation tends to drive bad behavior, and deals are done which shouldn't be attempted. Long-term reputations are sacrificed on the altar of short-term gains. We push clients into buying things they shouldn't buy, knowing it won't deliver the outcomes they seek. We celebrate in the short term about getting some numbers on the board and we regret what we've done at leisure. Trust and reputation in sales are worth a fortune, but we can squander that fortune through bad choices. Once the word gets out that you cannot be trusted, then the end is nigh for your sales career. The social media world has sped up the revelations about untrustworthy behavior, and bad news travels at internet light speed. Badly behaved salespeople will move around from one firm to another, but the stench follows them, and eventually they have to move again and again until they run out of runway and have to depart dodge. These are the people who make the profession so difficult for the rest of us. When we meet clients, they have that fear that we're a loser and we will dud them, so eager to part them from their company's money. B2B buyers are worried about the long-term impact on their careers rather than just the amount of money which will have gone up in smoke. And they are unforgiving and remain that way forever. The other side of the coin here are clients who look for weaknesses but you can smell a salesperson's desperation. They sense they can drive the price down to oblivion, and they start playing that game of sports negotiating. This means that a sale gets done, a number goes up on the board, the sales manager is temporarily assaged, but the brand and the salesperson's reputation have taken a hammering. 
Now there is no real price for the solution and it becomes whatever the buyer wants it to be. Once you get into having special pricing for a buyer, there is little chance of going back to full pricing and you are now trapped in a funnel of death where the profitability is close to zero or even negative. That buyer will just keep working you over because they enjoy torturing salespeople. It's a game for them. Find out more when we come back from the break. Our show today is brought to you by our public courses, but we also do custom in-house programs as well as we do them in both Japanese and English. We do them face-to-face -face in our super safe classroom and we do them live online. Okay, our show today is being brought to you by our Step Up the Leadership program on the 29th of August. This is a bridging program taking you from being a subordinate colleague player into being a leader. On the 30th, we'll be doing storytelling, which is a fundamental skill for everyone in business. We all have to become better communicators, and this is a critical skill of communication. Go to our website at www.dale-carnegie.co.jp. Get my best-selling books, Japan Sales Mastery, which in Japanese is Zaegyo, this is the Bible for selling in Japan. Japan Business Mastery, Japan Presentations Mastery, plus Stop Wasting Money on Training, which in Japanese is Training De Okani Wa Muru Ni Sunu Wa Yami Masho, and all are available on Amazon. If you like learning by watching videos, we have nearly 2,000 there for you at Tokyo Japan Balcony TV on YouTube. We release three TV shows every week on YouTube. The Cutting Edge Japan Business Show, that's the premier business show on Japan every Monday, Tokyo time. Fridays, we have the Japan Business Mastery Show. And on Sundays, we release Japan's top business interviews, where I interview leaders from small and medium enterprises all the way up to the corporate captains of industry on one topic, leading in Japan. Every second Thursday, we release the Business Pro Television Show. You can email me at greg.story at dalekani.com. Welcome back. I had a client who I liked, but he was a bad man. He was very handsome and charismatic. I really got on with him at a first meeting. Where possible, I try to make my clients my friends, and I thought I'd found a new friend here. He suddenly nominated what my solution would command, and as this was the first time to work with him, I went with it. I immediately regretted what I had done. I subsequently realized that this was going to be the price for all subsequent engagements and there was no differentiation across the quality of what we are providing against our much cheaper competitors. I refused to work with that company anymore because that pricing was very bad for the brand and frankly I considered it an insult. So much for my newfound friend. He subsequently left Tokyo and went overseas, probably never to return, and I won't be in a hurry to meet his acquaintance again. He was a non-client, but... I couldn't see it at the time. Another client was a sports negotiator. And we wound up haggling over the pennies in the price. We got down to a substantial discount and very close on the number, but he pushed me to go even lower and I just said no. I wasn't going to go any lower. That deal never happened because I realized he was another bad man and he was toying with me for his egotistical gratification. When you meet someone, once in a sales call, it is hard to get a full sense of the individual you're dealing with and you assume the best in people, which for the most part is the correct approach. It was a reasonably sized multinational firm and looked promising as a client. As a firm, they may be promising, but he was not the counterparty to work with. He was transferred out of the country to a new post and I doubt I will be seeing him again either and good riddance is how I feel about it. He was a non-client. I finally worked it out and I terminated him. Yes, we lost the deal, but we maintained the brand and the pricing. And guess what? Other clients were happy to pay full price because they appreciated the value. There is always another potential client. You need to draw a line in the sand and not tolerate bad people masquerading as clients. Did I tell either of these two characters that they were bad people? 
and I was not going to take their crap anymore. No, that is not an option for the sales professional. We can think it, but we cannot articulate it. We have to suck it up, drop them off the client list and keep moving to find a better client. We're seeking to do better business with nicer people. We keep a permanent record in our minds, though, to never deal with them ever again. We also refine our ability to spot non-clients in the future, and we become better at testing which category they're in from the early stages of the relationship. Thank you for joining the Sales Japan series. If you found the program useful, then please work on your karma and share this with your family, friends, and colleagues. Don't forget to subscribe and share this podcast. Immediately, apply what you've learned today. Go out there and survive. Use it and make some serious money. Bucks, dough, moolah, coin, dosh, lolly, reddies, smackers, earners, and bread and honey. Remember, I'm in your corner, committed to your success here in Nippon. Nippon.